Well, hey there. Thanks for watching this video. In case you don't know me, my name's Cade, and I'm here to help you follow Jesus. This is part four in a series where I'm proving that Jesus ain't woke. And in this video, I'm going to explain what God privilege is by comparing it to the woke counterfeit of white privilege. Yep, I'm going to go there. And I'm even going to talk about critical race theory. But be sure to watch to the end where I give you the biblical solution to the racism issue. Now, before we jump into this message, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I would definitely be categorized as white. And although if you want to get technical, I'm a mix of many different races. I even have enough Cherokee Indian blood to be considered part of the tribe, y'all. Woo woo! Woo! Right? <laughs> That's beside the point, though. As far as, as far as the woke people are concerned, I'm a white male and they are not happy about it. <laughs> in my early 20s, I went to work for a church that had a predominantly black congregation. And for the first time in my life, I was the minority in the room. And growing up, I vividly remember my mom teaching me that we don't treat people different because of their skin color. I don't even know why she was telling me that, because as a kid, you're just like, well, duh. Okay. I'm glad she told me, though, because that's ingrained in me. And I've discovered that by default, kids don't care about skin color. I mean, my six-year-old, a few months ago, she saw a black man. with the same, He was like the same height as me, same body style as me, had the same beard length as me. And she said, Daddy, look, he looks just like you. <laughs> just like you. So even though skin color isn't something that I think about, I'll admit the first few days at this job, I noticed it. It was strange to be the minority. I was the only white guy in the office, the only one. It only took a few days, though, to get over the shock of this new environment before I realized what a gift it was to be engulfed in a culture that was different than my own. It was really a beautiful thing. I mean, every time we had lunch at the church, the sweet ladies in the kitchen would bring food to my office, and man, that was some good cooking, y'all. That was good stuff. And they were always worried that I was too skinny. So they would bring me more than one dessert and expect me to eat all of it. It's awesome. I actually only remember one negative race-related experience in the three years that I worked there. A woman came into the main office. She peeked into my office and she went up to the secretary and said, You mean to tell me we hired a white boy? I didn't know if I should run or if I should hide or what was going on there. Run for the hills. But the secretary, who's still a great friend of mine, she did a great job handling the situation. We never talked about it again. But several years, several years after I'd moved on from this job, I reconnected with one of my coworkers there. And it was the great year of 2020, where race was being exploited for political gain. Anybody remember that? She saw a Facebook post of mine where I was supporting Donald Trump. The media did a great job convincing people that he was racist, even though he's not. So my previous coworker, she wanted to talk about it. We hopped on the phone and we, she started the conversation with Cade. The time we spent working together made me realize that not all white people are racist. I was expecting you to slip up over the three years that you worked, that we worked together and you never did. So I know without a doubt that you're not racist. And this statement shocked me because she always did a great job hiding her suspicions. I didn't know I was under trial all that time. But I'm so thankful God used me to help her overcome these challenges. You see, growing up, she had been taught to look out for white people. And for a good reason, the history between whites and blacks is troubling, you know? It really is. And my compassion runs deep for those who are hurt by the evil of racism. But if we step back and we take an honest look at the tension between blacks and, and whites, we'll find that the enemy works hard to stir up the peaceful waters. Anytime we're on the verge of resolve, he just he stirs it up and turns the tables. We're deceived into elevating one race over the other. Elevating one, on, and on the surface, it seems like a solid solution, but you think a little deeper and you'll realize, you know, we can't ever find equality if one is elevated over the other. There's no equality there. And the woke church helps the enemy advance his agenda because they proudly wear their race elevating gear to church, and then they go home feeling really good about themselves for doing that. And this is a good place to pause and let you know how, if you, how to know if what you're doing is godly or not. Do your actions elevate you or do they elevate God? If you go home patting yourself on the back, you can be sure that it had nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with him. 
A good example is the people who bow to the God of racism by publicly apologizing for being white. And then they walk off with a smile on their face because they feel so good about what they just did. Let me clear this up for you. That's called worshiping an idol, the idol of racism. The woke church may be encouraging it, but Jesus' church stays far from it. This idol expresses itself in many ways, one of which being critical race theory. I want you all to notice it's a theory. You know what a theory is? It's an idea. Not a fact. (laughs) It's an idea. Legal scholars actually developed this idea to examine if racism was built into the legal structure. That's where CRT originated. And I think that's a worthy cause, right? I mean, if, if racism is built into our legal structures, it needs to be found and it needs to be dealt with. But CRT has been hijacked by the enemy. It's now being used as a racial weapon in our schools. And I know Amy can testify to that because she teaches in the Tulsa schools. Teachers who bow to the God of racism, they teach critical race theory, thinking that they're doing a service, but all they accomplish is turning students against each other. White kids leave class feeling ashamed about their race. Then everybody else is frustrated with their white friends because they're privileged. This reveals the next expression of the racism idol, white privilege. Here we are. We finally made it there. Yet another idea that white people have the upper hand in life simply because they're white. I want you to go ahead and prove that idea to all the white people that are struggling. I'll wait. Go ahead. Go do it. Have you ever noticed how people look for ways to put down those who are more successful? It's because they have rich parents. It's because they don't pay their employees enough. It's because they're white. The reality is there will always be somebody who has dealt a better hand in life than you. Always. They have more resources, they're more talented, they have better connections, but the only person you're responsible for is you. When you get to heaven, God's not going to ask you how somebody else used their talents. He's going to ask you how you used yours. And let me tell you something, God's not impressed by those who have the most. He's impressed by those who multiply what they have. Man, that's good. Read the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 to get a good grasp on that. But white privilege, it's not part of the solution. It's a distraction. So what is the solution? Well, in the book of Romans, you'll find the apostle Paul. He's actually working hard throughout the whole book to disarm the racial tensions between the Jews and the Gentiles. Interestingly, he addresses the issue of the Jews being privileged and the Gentiles not. But instead of trying to make the Jews feel bad about their privileged status, you know what he does? He invites the Gentiles to be part of it. Man, it's good. Take a look. In Romans 5, 2, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. So this is what I like to call God privilege, and it's available to all who believe in Christ, no matter what race they are. The woke church doesn't want anybody to be privileged, but Jesus' church seeks to walk in God privilege. We, We seek to walk in it so that we can show other people how to do the same. So this is the answer to racism. Instead of teaching others about critical race theory and white privilege, we got to focus on leading people to Jesus and letting them know, hey, God privilege is available to you. It's available to, available to all who believe. God privilege is available to me. It's available to you. So are you going to keep griping about how life isn't fair? Are you just going to keep griping about it? Or are you going to step into the promises of God and show other people how to do the same? So that's my next book, God Privilege. If you found this message helpful, you'll love my book titled Jesus Ain't Woke. In it, you'll get the confirmation you need to steer clear of wokeness in a thrilling 30-minute read. I would love to personally sign a copy and send it to you. Order your book today at kdeyoung.com. If you would like to help me get this truth out to everybody who needs it, hit the like button. It may seem small, but it really helps a lot. So hit that like button. And I'd also like to invite you to consider giving into this ministry. Simply visit cadeyoung.com and you'll find a giving button there. I have more videos coming your way. Be sure to subscribe so I can let you know and I'll see you next time.